everyone, welcome back. So now that the weather is starting to improve, it means that it's chalk art season. So those chalk art festivals are gonna start rolling around. People are getting ready to spend these warm months outside doing beautiful large scale chalk murals. So in this video today, I'm gonna to tell you all about chalk art festivals, what you can expect on your first day if you're an artist, and I'll also give you some tips and advice of things to bring with you. Okay, so what is a chalk art festival? Well, a chalk art festival is really, really cool. It's where a whole bunch of artists get together from all over the place in one location and they do massive, large scale works of art in soft pastels. So they're usually six, eight, 10, up to 20 or 30 feet, depending on if it's 3D. If it's 3D, those things can get huge and they are so cool. Chalk art festivals appear all over the country. Probably some are starting about now, actually, especially if you live in a warmer state like Florida. I think they've already had at least one festival so far this year. So there's probably gonna be a chalk art festival happening somewhere near you, maybe in driving distance. So definitely go to the computer, type chalk art festival, your location in, and see what pops up. So my first experience with a chalk art festival was uh, three years ago, actually wasn't that long ago. My friend sent me a email for the local community events for the upcoming summer months and it had listed a chalk art festival and I was like, what? What is that? I've never heard of a chalk art festival, tell me more. And so we went and I was blown away. It was so cool. So the La Strada Chalk Art Festival happens in Hillsboro, Oregon once a year, usually in the third weekend of July. They close down Maine. Okay, so from first to third is completely shut down and they bring in artists from all around the country to do these large eight by eight or 10 by 10, or if it's three dimensional, it's gonna be much larger uh, works of art in soft pastels. And sometimes they also will use tempera paint and they are absolutely stunning. It's a lot of fun. There's vendors and music and performers and it's just a great, great event for the whole family. Totally free. I was blown away by it and I walked up to the booth and I said, this is so cool. How can I be a part of it? So that's how I became a part of the La Strada family. So now I'm actually the chalk artist team lead. So sort of in charge of managing all the artists that come in. So anyways, that's what a chalk art festival is. It's a group of artists coming together to create beautiful works of art. You get to watch in real time how they actually work, how they do these beautiful masterpieces. It's definitely a sight to see if you haven't gone. Okay, so let's pretend you are a chalk artist and you're going to your first chalk art event. So. Let's talk about things that you can expect. On day one, you're gonna wanna check in. There should be an artist booth there. You're gonna go up, check in, uh, give your name. They're gonna give you probably a t-shirt, maybe a goodie bag. Uh, you could have a lunch slip in there. Uh, La Strada pays for the artist lunches. And then you're gonna go find your square. And you can go ahead and prep your square if you need to. And prepping's really easy. The square should already be marked out for you. So if you're doing eight by eight or 10 by 30 if it's 3D or a 10 by 10, whatever it is, it should be marked out with chalk already. So you just need to go there and prime it if you would like. And that consists of using a roller and tempera paint. It's a mixture of 50-50 black and white tempera paint. Only use tempera, never use acrylic base. Even though acrylic base is water soluble, it will not come off easy. Okay, so tempera washes right off. And you're gonna put that down and let it dry for a few minutes. And then you're gonna go ahead and jump in and start chalking. So with La Strada, we are allowing a check-in on Friday night before the event. Saturday, I believe it opens to artists about 7 a.m. And you need to finish by about, I think it's six, five o'clock on Sunday, actually. I think we wrap up at six. So you should be finished about five, maybe six o'clock on Sunday. So you have about two whole days to create your masterpiece. Now, some of the things that you should also know is, um, Lodging is included with La Strada that is so I don't know about other festivals. They may or may not include lodging They may or may not include travel. We do not include travel in ours But we do include the lodging which the hotel offers a you know continental breakfast type of thing and then for Transportation we'll have TriMet slips that you can use to take the back sort of a bus downtown And it's really quite quick doesn't take very long at all and then at the end we sort of have a ceremony event where we hand out People's Choice Awards with ribbons and the artists do get paid a little bit of money. Okay, so we've talked about 
what a chalk art festival is, what you can expect as a new chalk artist going into the event. Now let's talk about some things that could help you. Okay, so uh, last year was my first year doing it and I learned a lot, so I wanted to share some of that with you. So first of all, make sure obviously you have lots and lots of water. They'll be handing out water, but make sure you pack something with you as well. So make sure you pack up all your supplies, but also maybe water and snack, that's really important. Plus sunblock, you're gonna need that sunblock. A hat, hats are really great, even though there are some umbrellas in the area, they usually don't provide uh, a lot of shade. Also, you do have to move them kind of a lot, it feels like, because of the time you're spent outside, the sun really moves around. Make sure you dress very comfortable, have layers, uh, t-shirt and shorts, but make sure you have a light sweater if you need to, comfortable shoes. Other things that you could bring with you that might help for your comfort would be sponge pads for your knees or hands. So you could either do knee pads that you can get pretty much anywhere hardware store or those spongy foam pads for gardening. Those are also very helpful. Some artists just use large pieces of cardboard, which we do provide for you. Um, some festivals provide that to you that you could just lay on so that you don't get your chalk piece messed up. That's really important. Please be mindful of your chalk art piece because you can easily smudge it. So make sure you kind of work from like the center out or from top to bottom or something like that. So where you're not totally stepping on it because you can smear it pretty easily. Uh, another thing that's really helpful are pool noodles. Okay, so pool noodles are really cool. They're used for blending. I was using a brush, but that was sort of smearing around the pigment a bit much um, and lifting up the pigment and it would blow away. So you obviously don't want that. Keep that in mind. It's really important because some days are very windy. Okay, so when you take a pool noodle and you cut off about an inch of it and then cut that in half, you have like a, a half a donut, right? A U shape that's going to be your blending tool so what you'll do is you'll actually rub that into the ground um, in the area you're trying to blend and that scrubs in the pigment into the ground it works much better than a brush so highly recommend that one most artists use gloves not all of them but most use some sort of gloves because i mean you're on the ground it's kind of dirty and it's really rough so you don't want to get calluses and bloody fingers so Think about some sort of uh, hand covering to use. So whether that's a, a glove, rubber gloves, um, the finger gloves. Okay, also make sure you're using the right materials. Don't you use Crayola chalk? I used that last year. It was fine on my driveway, but after you prime the surface and use it, the pigment's actually diluted a little. It's not as strong, right? It's not as vibrant, it doesn't look as good. So I've linked down below the chalk that I recommend. It doesn't have to be expensive, okay? It's just soft pastels is what you're looking for. Soft pastels. They have stronger pigments. They're easier to work with. It's really nice to have. So I would suggest you using soft pastels instead of chalk. You can also use one of those chalk sticks if you like. I don't personally like them, but that's an option too. I'll link that down below as well. So you stick your chalk onto the stick and you can draw from standing up so you're not hunched over all the time. And then you can also have some other blending supplies, maybe a sponge if you'd like. Um, you can incorporate temper paint. Uh, so if you want to bring a brush and your temper paints, that's fine. You cannot use acrylic again. I cannot stress that enough. That does not really wash off the street. Okay, so don't do that. That's kind of like the basic stuff you're going to need for your kit. Um, other artists may have more. Uh, specialty items. Other things I suggest would be make sure you have a printout of your image obviously that you're working from and laminate that if you can. Other things that you can do would be write your handle of your Instagram or your YouTube or whatever whatever it may be underneath your chalk painting. So you can do that again with temper paint. So bring a little brush so that you can write the at Caroline Green art at, under your picture. So let's now finish up with things please don't do. Please, please, please don't do. Uh, again, don't use acrylics. Don't use anything but temper paint. It's extremely important. Don't use glitter or any fun, colory, sparkly things you can put onto your chalk pieces. We try to be really mindful of the environment at our festival. We don't allow anything that gets washed off that will end up into our rivers or oceans. So we don't want glitter. We also don't use any type of adhesives or finishings. Uh, because it's not needed. It's also very toxic, so we don't want to do that either. So yes, your chalk piece is going to get washed away. If you are working with a grid, so you have an image that you decided to uh, put a grid over to work in squares, that's kind of what I do, then you're going to want to make sure you have a snap line. It's, <laughs> trust me, it's a lot easier than what I did last year. I was using just a ruler and a chalk. It took quite a bit longer. Snap lines are great. You will need two people for them. You can get them at a hardware store. 
basically it looks like a sort of like a ruler in a way it's a string that winds in on itself with chalk powdered chalk you unwind it taut and one person grabs one and you have the other and you snap it and the line appears instantly it's so much easier okay so much easier than working with a ruler and a piece of chalk I want to take a break here and say that if you are enjoying this video, please it would mean the world to me if you could like and subscribe down below. Okay, so I went over a little bit here and I hope that's helpful for you guys to learn what a chalk art festival is. Maybe you want to apply, that would be awesome. Maybe you've already applied and you don't really know what to expect or what to bring. Hopefully this video is helpful to you. Um, please let me know in the comments down below what you think. I'll link everything down below, materials, the festival that I'm a part of. So until next week, everyone, bye.